Mars, potentially humanity's next frontier. And boy, is it an amazing time to be alive, given that in the next 30 years, we could bear witness to our species becoming interplanetary. This could possibly be the biggest leap forward our species could make, given our desire to outreach into the cosmos. I mean, colonizing other planets could make possible all kinds of new scientific discoveries, as well as advancements in engineering, and help us uncover history and make history. But then there are people like me who are interested in a different aspect of all of this. The keystone that makes all of this possible. The people who will leave Earth and venture out to do this. So let's look at the history and the science and see if I can give you something new to think about. Our culture obviously contributes to a large part of our identity, but prolonged isolation can cause distinct differences between what was once the same group of people. This is obvious, and when we apply it to interplanetary humans, we can expect people who live very far away from Earth to develop new cultural constructs and behaviors due to that very separation. And we have to realize the colonies we set up in our solar system and our galaxy may want to be independent from Earth. A prime historical example would be England and the 13 colonies. England invested a lot of time and money and sent even its own people to the colonies. But it only took about 200 years for a mass majority of people to feel that they themselves were different than the British and needed to rule themselves. This became a massive motivator for people to fight, and when they won, they constructed a whole new identity for themselves. And once the other colonies caught wind of this, they themselves wanted to rule their own countries because they recognized that they had their own identities and had the ability to rule themselves. Great examples being Haiti and Mexico. And the list goes on. But what made colonization worth it was the economic prosperity that it brought back to the countries owning these areas. And that's definitely something we need to understand. As humbling as it may be that we will be leaving Earth Earth and going to places all throughout the solar system and potentially the galaxy to further our understanding of it, the only way that will truly be possible is if we can afford it. And that alone can be a major reason for once places become self-sufficient to want to separate because they realize that they can support themselves financially. I mean, money is the reason why we don't keep going back to the moon. We've been there six times and the last time was in the 70s. It's an investment and we don't make pretty much anything back from it. For an example on Earth, we can look at the concept of colonizing Antarctica. There is not many places, if any at all, where people could make giant settlements and make money and make that profitable. People are willing to sponsor little stations where scientists can go out and discover things and research things, but we don't really see people wanting to invest in that because they understand the amount of money that they could make in return really wouldn't be worth the money going into it. Now we have to realize that people may want to fight for independence if they can financially support themselves. Currently in Scotland, we can see both sides are arguing quite intensely over the possibility of Scotland being able to afford being separate from the United Kingdom. Now, one of the major drives for wanting to be separate is because they want to be able to control all the things that happen in Scotland. But the only thing that's really holding them back is if it can be affordable. But we realize that this is a very common problem around the world. Many people want to separate because they identify themselves as being different than the country that rules them. If we look at the very nature of people themselves, we always find ways to separate ourselves from each other. And especially when this is happening at great distances for long periods of time, these differences add up extremely fast. Countries on Earth may have the ability to colonize Mars and any hospitable planet at that, but we can find that potentially generations down the road, people born on other planets may not have a true emotional connection to Earth and could be very dissatisfied with Earth making all the major shots on their planet. Mars could potentially be a great example of what could be. Not only over the next few generations will they start to identify themselves as Martians, as being separate from Earth, but they could deem that the people on Mars could rule Mars better than the people on Earth could. Especially if they feel a much stronger sense of pride about that planet. So another thing we may want to consider is how the United Kingdom dealt with some of its other colonies, such as Canada, Australia, New Zealand, and a few others. 
They stayed a part of the United Kingdom for a very long time, but both these colonies and the United Kingdom came to a point where they realized that they themselves should and had the right to rule themselves. Canada, Australia, New Zealand, they all had the right to rule themselves and because of this there was no fighting, there was no war and they kept a great relationship which they still have today. This could be a very good example for the future. And we also need to consider that people born on different planets have potential to look different than people on Earth. In the case of Mars, Mars has much less gravity than Earth and because of that people born on that planet have the potential to have bone problems but also will be taller than people on Earth. And this could possibly make it impossible for them to ever come to Earth and live here because doing so their bodies wouldn't be able to handle the gravity being that they developed on a planet with much less gravity. So what is the point of this video? What is the point of telling you all of this? I really want people to be interested in thinking about humans and what will happen to humans as we spread out across the galaxy, or in this case, the solar system. This isn't really a concept I've heard many people talk about, but I feel it's very important to bring up, especially since we're in the very, very, very early stages. This generation has the potential to make the foundation of what could possibly be the future of all human existence in the cosmos. As colonizing other planets becomes more and more of a reality, we have to understand how we can use history to our advantage and avoid the very problems that our forefathers had experienced. I have a deep appreciation for anthropology, psychology, and sociology, and when you take the time to understand them, including the history of humans, we may be able to actually influence, believe it or not, the way we deal with these problems as they arise in the future. Even though I believe it's inevitable that humans will become interplanetary, I also believe that we will one day be able to travel across the entire galaxy. And in doing so, we will encounter problems similar to this as we colonize different planets throughout the solar system and the galaxy. It definitely won't be in our lifetime, but I do believe it is likely. We need to realize that the governments of Earth will not always be able to control all the colonies we set up. Because there will always be a sense of nationalism or economic tension or even an ideological split that will cause the people of these colonies on different planets to want to be separate from Earth because they feel that they would have better control of their government than we could. But if we challenge that with aggression and fight them, not only would that be absolutely horrible, but we could potentially make a planet that could probably defend itself and then would rival us through the sheer dislike of us. And I want to emphasize that we need to be okay with them wanting to rule themselves. We need to be prepared for that. That's gotta be in the overall plan. What we should do is condition the people we send to these planets. Condition them to understand that they have the potential to rule over themselves one day. Heck, maybe even one day our colonies will make colonies. But we all gotta be willing to work together and the only way that will happen is if we prepare for the inevitable. So like I said, this problem I can almost promise you will never occur in our lifetime. But I want to bring it up because I feel it's a very interesting topic to talk about and a great thing we should think about as a society. Because one day Mars will most likely be an independent planet. History tends to repeat itself and those who ignore it will be the ones who have the problems. But if we can learn from what has happened in history, we can make a great future. For humanity's sake. So my question for you guys is, what are your thoughts on this? Is this completely new to you? Have you ever thought about this before? How do you think we should deal with this? What are your thoughts? And with all that said and done, my name's Dale. This is Think Fact, and remember, never stop learning. Thanks for watching. If you guys like my videos, please subscribe to stay tuned for more. For more videos over the facts and thoughts that almost everybody missed.